Thank you very much for coming along to learn about flags. Um, so firstly, what is a flag? And secondly, how do you design a good one? Um, ever since I've been telling people that I'm talking about flags, they've been telling me lots of interesting facts, many of which I didn't know previously. So it's an immense topic that I'm just going to scratch the surface of. And let's go. Uh, so... A uh, definition from Wikipedia, a piece of fabric with a distinctive design and colours. It is used as a symbol, a signalling device or for decoration. The study of flags is known as vexillology from the Latin vexillum, meaning flag. Uh, so firstly, what is a flag materially? Well, the oldest flag dates to around 2400 BCE with this bronze flag found in Iran. Uh, so early flags weren't necessarily fabric. Um, but it was the invention of silk by the Chinese that allowed flags as we know them today to flourish. Modern flags tend to be made of polyester or nylon. Caddy or hand-spun cloth is the only material allowed to be used for the Indian flag. Flying a flag made of any other material is punishable by law with imprisonment up to three years. Raw materials for caddy are restricted to cotton, silk, and wool. The flag of the Netherlands is the second oldest after the flag of Denmark, and many European flag designs have been influenced by it. Legend has it that the original flag had an orange stripe representing the Royal House of Orange, and the yellow pigment mixed with the red tended to deteriorate. Um, so they eventually chose to stick with the base red. It's hard to corroborate that story, but that's what I've learned. Um, and it's traditional to fly an orange pennant, a triangular-shaped flag, with the Dutch flag on five designated days, including Queen's Day. Of course, Dutch sports teams wear the colour orange. Um, another flag that has changed colour is the Jolie Rouge, um, that uh, this is thought to be the origin of the name Jolly Roger. The symbol now forms the international pictogram for poisonous substances. Um, historically, flags have been used for signalling, semaphore less these days, um, but they still have a use at sea. But the idea of flags representing a state or a nation gained traction first on the battlefield to help identify friend or foe. And according to Wikipedia, few countries today currently have proper war flags, most preferring to use instead their state flag or standard national flag for this purpose. You might recognise the flag of Ukraine, the, the war flag of, flag of Ukraine, and the Greek war flag is interesting with its gold tassels. The war flag of the Philippines is the national flag with the red and blue swapped. In Mozambique, they just go ahead and put an AK-47 on the national flag. Um, here it is alongside a few other national flags which depict items you wouldn't be allowed in a London nightclub with. Controversially, Japan still uses the rising sun flag which many people, especially in China and Korea, associate with wartime atrocities. Um, this is used by the Maritime Self-Defence Forces, and this is used by the Self-Defence Forces ground-based. Maritime flags are also known as ensigns and are flown at the rear of a vessel. A jack is smaller and flown from the bow, traditionally. Uh, this you might have seen on um, Mr. Stewart's um, podium at the uh, Remembrance um, talk. Um, so graphically and vexillologically, um, here is Artifexion on YouTube with a quick run-through. Some terminology. Front, a.k.a. obverse. Back, a.k.a. reverse. Ratio, hoist, fly, canton and device or charge. Uh, national flags tend to be re rectangular. A ratio of two to three is most common. And here is some terminology to describe common patterns. 
the 2 to 3 ratio used by 85, uh, 85 of 195 sovereign states. 1 to 2 is the second most popular, used by 54 sovereign states. Um, so a bend is a diagonal stripe. A bend sinister, the heraldic term for a diagonal stripe from low left to high right. Sinister, you might know, is Latin for left, but it describes the left side from the point of view of the shield bearer. Um, it could also be a book by Nabokov or a 1986 album by The Fall. Uh, only two national flags are square. And Nepal has the only non-quadrilateral flag, the third oldest, in fact, nationally, uh, which echoes the peaks of the Himalayas. And this is the height-to-width ratio. The only non-rectangular US state flag is known as the Ohio Burgee, which I'm reassured is actually a Burgee, a swallow-tailed one, in fact. Um, Although my research tells me that, a, strictly speaking, a burgee is the distinguishing flag of a recreational boating organisation and is usually pennant-shaped. Um, the flag of Ohio is officially folded in 17 steps. You get the gist. Uh, the UK Flag Institute outlines the protocol for folding the Union flag, which is not necessarily a jack. Unless, of course, it's flying from the jack staff. Um, other things the Flag Institute will guide you on include whether the flag is upside down or not, and how it should be hung on vehicles, flat against the surface, with another flag, on uniforms, with cross flags, in processions, among many other things. According to some commentators, the Union flag reminds the Welsh that they are forgotten as the Principality of Wales was already united with England by the time the flag was designed. Although Amazon is selling this version, if you wish. Um, Mail Online reports that what the Welsh really want is an anatomically correct dragon. And apparently, within symbology... This is from the Welsh Parliament Petitions page. An erect penis depicts fertility and strength. When the penis is missing, this portrays the creature, the nation, as dominated, weak and fragile. Nor is Wales represented on the royal standard, which notably is different in Scotland, and isn't actually a standard. The Flag Institute corrects itself. It's actually the royal banner, a standard being an heraldic flag similar to the pennants above. So this is more of your standard standard. A flag of heraldic design, long and tapering, possibly with a rounded or double-rounded lanceolate or double-tailed descate fly, carrying the owner's badge and motto, sometimes also a national symbol or personal arms, and bordered in his livery colours. A banner is simply a flag-like cloth, according to the Dictionary of Vexillology. As for the flag of England, possibly a little bit racist, according to some observers, the week quotes a report blaming extreme, hooligans, uh, extreme street hooligans of the English Defence League. Some countries have similar flags, which is handy when you come from Ivory Coast, or more correctly, Côte d'Ivoire, and you do not have your own flag, ha flag handy, but come across some friendly Irish fans who lend you theirs. The Irish Foreign Ministry keen to point out that other countries have similar flags. I would have possibly started with the flags of Indonesia and Monaco, which are only distinguishable by their ratio. Elon Musk getting slightly more engagement than the Irish Foreign Ministry, to be fair, wonders why more people aren't talking about the, uh, the similarity of the flags of Chad and Romania. But, of course, people are talking about it online. Uh, with um, the Romanian president at the time, Ion Iliescu, uh, refusing to give up the colours, uh, the crest associated with communism was dropped in 1989. Um, 
Romania does define the colours used more narrowly than Chad, and therefore the Chad colours sometimes appear darker. Chad colours being, of course, blue, yellow and red. Romania being cobalt, chrome and vermilion, as specified with these colour references. And what is a flag culturally and psychologically? Um, this is a quote from Wally Ollins, who uh, his book Nation Branding says that people want to belong. They want to belong and they want to display the symbols of belonging. And Goethe says, oh, what does Goethe say? A country starts out from a name and a flag and it then becomes them. Uh, let's have a look at what Tim Marshall here describes as the most recognisable, loved, hated, respected, feared and admired flag in the world. The flag of the United States of America. Predominantly red, according to Michael from Vsauce. I know you're a fan. It has a code surrounding its use, including, of course, guidelines for folding the flag. But it also prescribes several rules that people seem to delight in breaking. For example, no part of the flag should ever be used as a costume or athletic uniform. The flag should never be carried flat or horizontally, but always aloft and free. Um, but they're only guidelines. It's not currently illegal to desecrate the US flag, but it has been in the past. And I realise this map looks like pretty much any global statistic you're ever going to come across, but the green countries are the only ones where it is currently known to be legal to desecrate the flag. Uh, so that means it is definitely illegal in these countries, and these countries, and these countries, and these countries. Um, but burning the American flag seems to be a popular pastime, although Donald Trump has always been vociferous about his desire to change the law on this. Using Twitter, as usual, to declare his position, it should be stopped, and now. Senator Joe Biden, I don't know if you've heard of him, felt strongly about it too, as can be seen in this footage from 1989. That is the national symbol of unity. We need unity in this country. Symbols are important. Americans who want to burn the American flag should consider moving to Iran, China, or Cuba, where burning the American flag is not only legal, but encouraged. Um, it turns out that half of Americans say it should be illegal to burn the US flag. Um, Americans themselves do it when they want to be controversial, as Rage Against the Machine did at the end of their set at the infamously pyrotechnic Woodstock 99 festival. Uh, artists also delight in toying with this taboo. Banksy announced his support for the Black Lives Matter movement by sharing this artwork on Instagram. This famous work by Dred Scott invited people to stand on the flag and write comments in a book. It drew a lot of media attention. And that same year, it was banned by Senate vote. Um, when I walked into that room and saw the muddy footprints and the soil condition it was in, I just wanted to cry, one veteran said. Um, and the Stars and Stripes became an enduring symbol following 9-11, of course. Indeed, sales shot up in the following two days. Uh, also that year, there was a huge increase in hate crimes against Muslims. Uh, the New Yorker magazine suggested that if Muslims wanted to be accepted, they should show their allegiance to the flag. Richard Nixon made the lapel pin badge popular in the late 60s. Barack Obama, seen here wearing one, controversially chose not to wear one as a presidential candidate in 2007, saying, my attitude is that I'm less concerned about what you're wearing on your lapel than what's in your heart. The 9-11 scene echoed the famous raising of the flag on the Japanese island of Iwo Jima during the Second World War, one of the most 
imitated images of any type, as seen on various stamps. Sri Lanka's central bank got into hot water for adding it to their 1,000 rupee note, uh, initially denying they were inspired by Rosenthal's image. Time magazine was branded an absolute disgrace for using this image on the cover of their global warming issue. Under Armour withdrew this T-shirt design with deep regret. And this spawned fury, according to the Washington Post. Uh, But the image has been parodied in many places, including on album covers and, of course, by Lego, The Simpsons, Hard Rock Cafe, British political cartoons, pixel art for a game, um, King of the Hill, and Banksy again, and buildings, and beer. Um, But the flag which prompts the most intense visceral response for many people is possibly this one. Hitler stated... Um, the new flag should prove effective as a large poster because in hundreds of thousands of cases, a really striking oops, sorry, a really striking emblem may be the first cause of awakening interest in a movement. Uh, the swastika is, uh, is an ancient symbol of good fortune used in the flag of Jainism. Of course, the Nazi flag also proved effective at excluding sections of the population as Jews were not allowed to display it. Here it is modelled by Prince Harry. And Sid Vicious, also available as a highly offensive Halloween costume. Another flag which has a checkered past. Sorry. (laughs) The Confederate battle flag. Now, I most remember this flag from the roof of the General Lee car in the Dukes of Hazzard. Uh, For Tim Marshall... Again, it clearly was not intended to suggest that the Dukes supported segregation, simply that they were good old boys from the South. Um, So in promising you a university-style education, I turned to CBBC. You might recognise this. It's the flag of the United States of America. And this is the Confederate battle flag. It was used as a symbol by a group of southern states in the USA that wanted to keep black people as slaves 150 years ago. This led to a civil war and they used the confederate flag in battle. They lost the war and slavery was ended, but the flag is still flown in public in many places in the south. The flag is in the news now because it was used by the man police believe killed nine black people in a racist attack. Many black people in the USA think the flag is a symbol of racism. But some people in the south of the USA say the flag isn't racist, it's part of their history and it should be flown in public. Lots of politicians now say it's time to put the confederate battle flag away. President Obama says that it only belongs in a museum. After the First World War, there was a rapid growth in white supremacist groups, especially in the south, and gradually the Klan adopted the uh, the emblem. Uh, Donald Trump still refuses to recognise it as an offensive symbol. Anyway, let's have a look at how to design a good flag. Now, I looked at the North American Vexillological Association's document, Good Flag, Bad Flag, and the document pictured here. And conveniently, NAVA has come up with five simple guidelines Keep it simple, use meaningful symbolism, use two to three basic colours, no lettering or seals, be distinctive or be related. So firstly, keep it simple. The flag should be so simple that a child can draw it from memory. I don't think they mean necessarily use an actual child's drawing like the flag of Brown County, Nebraska, pilloried mercilessly on social media. Um, the flag of Nigeria would be easy to draw from memory. That's one for the computer scientists. Uh, Use meaningful 
symbolism. The flag's images, colours or patterns should relate to what it symbolises. Many flags manage to evoke the very land they represent. I like the flag of St Lucia, which echoes the volcanic peaks or pitons on the island. Rona got me onto that one. After the breakup of the USSR, some former Soviet socialist republics came up with some great flags which symbolised their land. The flag of Ukraine represents the fields of wheat and blue sky of the country. And the flag of Estonia also looks like the land itself. The flag of Uzbekistan hides the Arabic word Allah in its flag. And there is another flag that has Allah Akbar, God is great, written 22 times. Any guesses? Flag of Iran. 22 being the date of the Iranian revolution. Uh, Use two or three basic colours. Limit the number of colours on the flag to three which contrast well and come from the standard colour set. The standard colour set being red, often symbolising the blood of the people, amongst other things. Blue. White. Interestingly, the flag of Jamaica is the only national flag not to use either red, blue, or white. It does, however, use the last three, green, yellow, or gold, and black. They are used in these proportions in national flags. The flag of Dominica is one of very few to use purple, on the Dominican Cicero parrot. And the flag of Belize uses the most colours at 19 and unusually features humans with weapons. The Japanese flag designers are very good at making just two or three colours work well, according to Artifaxian here. The Japanese prefecture flags, aka the Helvetica Vexillology, so objectively brilliant that it's become kinda trendy to hate them. They are clearly part of the same family, yet each are unique. Additionally, their devices are inspired by calligraphy and geography, making them inclusive. Not that that's a huge factor in Japan, but it's a good take-home. Flags need to be inclusive. Contrast this with the Australian state flags. Homogenous and Eurocentric. Sorry Australia, that was mean, but in my defence, I didn't bring up Adelaide. That would have been really mean. I like Amsterdam's use of three colours, whereas I think this one's possibly a bit much. And here are the county flags of Liberia, which have a niche appeal, especially for fans of floating trees. No lettering or seals. Never use writing of any kind or an organisation's seal. A rule which US city flags famously abuse. And here's Artifaxian again. And Virginia, no seals, period. They are designed to be viewed close up, not at a distance. Logos, on the other hand, could work well if they are super basic and do not contain text. Because flags should never feature plain text. Wisconsin. Text is unreadable when the flag is fluttering in the wind, at a distance, and will be reversed on the reverse. Want to use text? Do a Colorado and make it a graphical component rather than just plain text. Interestingly, Panama uses a different seal on the reverse of their flag, as it does Oregon, who, which has a beaver on the back. And fifthly, be distinctive or be related. Avoid duplicating other flags, but use similarities to show connections. Like the Pan-Arab flags, which use red, white, black, and green. The Nordic countries, using the Nordic cross. Central American countries, uh, symbolize the two oceans they sit between. 
And several African countries use the colors of the Ethiopian flag, the only African country to largely resist colonial rule. Uh, Marcus Garvey, a Jamaican political activist, famously created the Pan-African flag in 1920 to represent the African diaspora, stating, show me the race or the nation without a flag and I will show you a race of people without any pride. Marcus Garvey's design influenced this uh, African-American flag, uh, designed by David Hammonds in 1990, which replaces the familiar red, white, and blue with the Pan-African colors. It also influenced this design, Union Black, by Chris Ophilly, as featured on the Equality, Diversity, and Inclusion page of the Herodian School website. Um, So if you want to redesign an existing flag, what should you do? NAVA advisors don't allow a committee to design a flag. Instead, empower individuals to design flags and use a committee to select among them. Let's have a quick look at the flag of Milwaukee. In the 1950s, Milwaukee leaders discovered it was one of only four cities with a population over 500,000 without a flag. And so the city held a contest for flag designs. The winner was a 17-year-old who was awarded a $100 savings bond, but his design was not officially adopted by the city. Instead, the city's art commission decided to design a new flag itself, incorporating elements of several entries. So that was the winning design, which they managed to make even worse by cobbling together this, the current flag of Milwaukee which even appears to have a flag on the flag. The flag of Chicago is somewhat tidier, and it's still loaded with symbolism. This is what design aficionado Roman Mars has to say about it in his TED Talk. Number three, use two to three basic colors. The basic rule for colors is to use two to three colors from the standard color set, red, white, blue, green, yellow, and black. The design of the Chicago flag has complete buy-in with an entire cross-section of the city. It is everywhere. Every municipal building flies the flag. Like, there's probably at least one store in every block near where I work that sells some sort of Chicago flag paraphernalia. That's Wet Moser from Chicago Magazine. Today, just for example, I went to get a haircut, and when I sat down on the barber's chair, there was a Chicago flag on the box that the barber has kept all his tools in, and then in the mirror, there was a Chicago flag on the wall behind me. When I left, a guy passed me who had a Chicago flag badge on his backpack. It's adaptable and remixable. The six-pointed stars in particular show up in all kinds of places. The coffee I bought the other day had a Chicago star on it. It's a distinct symbol of Chicago pride. When a police officer or a firefighter dies in Chicago, often it's not the flag of the United States on his casket. It can be the flag of the city of Chicago. That's how deeply the flag has gotten into the civic imagery of Chicago. And it isn't just that people love Chicago and therefore love the flag. I also think that people love Chicago more because the flag is so cool. A positive feedback loop there between great symbolism and civic pride. So the flag of Chicago works at a small scale. A child can draw it from memory. It's adaptable. It works in grayscale. And never underestimate the power of a red star. Another US city flag which has its own TED talk is the flag of Pocatello, Idaho. In fact, it's been voted the worst of all time. It had not only a trademark symbol, but also the copyright details at the bottom. What they did was take individual submissions, such as this one, uh, and then they chose one of those. This is the final design chosen in 2017, which our friend Logan, who did the TED Talk over here, is a big fan of. Last year saw another terrible American city flag redesigned, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. 
And of course, national flags have been redesigned also. The current Rwandan flag was adopted in 2001, ostensibly to avoid the negative connotations associated with the 1994 genocide. The new flag of South Africa was adopted at the beginning of the 1994 general election, the first to allow citizens of all races to vote. It has been declared that any display of the old flag, also known as the apartheid flag, constitutes hate speech. Although it would appear to break the rule of how many colours to use, I haven't heard anyone say that the South African flag is anything but brilliant design. It cleverly brings together various symbols from the Rainbow Nation's history. Uh, This country's flag never got changed in the end. So what have people highlighted as the reasons it needs to change at all? Well, firstly, it's remarkably similar to the Australian flag. No wonder the sports teams use the more distinctive green and gold and black. Um, And secondly, this, the empire flag. Some great post-colonial flags have emerged in recent times. Although Fiji forgot to remove the union flag. They may be getting around to it soon, though. Uh, So this is how it worked. Five final designs, designs were chosen for a referendum in 2015. This is the five designs. John Oliver was very amused by some of the entries which didn't quite make the short list. Here he is pledging allegiance to this one. Quite like. Uh, Then a second referendum was held in 2016 to pick between the existing flag and the people's favourite redesign. But it turns out the nation didn't really want a new flag after all a close and divisive 2016 referendum result, if you can imagine that. Um, And finally, a flag we don't have yet, but maybe we should. The flag of planet Earth. Uh, We are living in uncertain times. This is a headline from this morning. Uh, There's a global climate crisis, a global resource crisis. We need unity, and unity needs a symbol. The closest, perhaps, that we have is the flag of the United Nations. But it is an organisation. It's involved in conflicts, albeit in a peacekeeping role, symbolised by the olive branches. And there are a handful of countries that are not a member or have disputed territory status. And Tim Marshall suggests that the concentric circles in it can, if you're of a certain disposition, look alarmingly as if the world is caught in the crosshairs of an alien race. Many people have proposed designs for a planet Earth flag, uh, which includes this one uh, and these. Uh, This one, which Thomas Mandel proposes in his TED Talk, is a blue circle on a transparent background. It's the flag I've put in the corner over there on my slides. This is how it would look flying. Um, but, But perhaps the one with the most traction is this one. What could the flag of the planet Earth look like? Would it illustrate the planet itself? Or is it a symbol of the inhabitants of Earth? A reminder that we should all stand united. Celebrate life itself. Remind us that all life is connected, in one way or another. But life wouldn't be possible without the water on Earth. Therefore, it would be relevant for the blue planet's flag to be blue. But what kind of blue? A flag like this would mainly be used while representing Earth in outer space. It should be a clear contrast to the black of outer space, also to the white of the spacesuits and shuttles, which it would be placed upon. Light blue would disappear into the white, and dark blue would disappear into the black. 
Therefore, a brighter blue would be more fitting. There are a lot of different ratios or proportions for flags. A few of them would be conceptually interesting for a flag like this. For example, the one-to-one -one ratio is a perfect square, fitting a circle or a planet if you will. Five to eight is the golden ratio, a mathematical ratio that occurs in lots of different mystical ways in nature. The most common flag ratio in the world is the two to three ratio. All of these options were taken into consideration during the design process of the international flag of planet Earth, resulting in a flag that reminds us to take care of each other and the planet we live on. Um, but a final thought, which perhaps highlights one of the key impediments, yet simultaneously highlights the very need for a flag for us to unite under. After all, who gets to choose it? Who runs the committee? Who speaks for it and therefore for all of us? As a planet, we are not united. So what will you design? And uh, I thought I'd let you go a little bit early today. <laughs>